Hello, musical director. It's the Western Wonder again. That's right, the Western Wonder. I would like a change of pace for the background musical numbers. This time, to set the mood at like a smooth jazz track production. Something that fits what I'll be reviewing for my episode. Can you do that for me? Thanks. Yeah, that smooth jazz is worth the vibe. Greetings, mysterious listeners. I'm the Western Wonder, and you're listening to yet another episode from the Western Reviews Podcast. Today's review sets a different change of pace and genre, and is different from previous episodes for two reasons. Number one, this is my first review of a television show in over a year, and number two, this is my first review of a modern television show, and I can't think of any current show as of recent to hold that honor here in Westernland. Today, we'll be taking a look at the first three episodes of Only Murders in the Building, only available on Hulu. Ah, but before I start, If you enjoyed today's review, be sure to follow the show on various social platforms. On Twitter, you can find me at reviews underscore western, or on my Instagram page, you can find me via Western Reviews Official, because I'm the only official Western Reviews that I know of at the moment. Follow me there, and you can be updated on when episodes are on the way, receive news regarding my upcoming website to be unveiled, and more. The show is available on numerous streaming platforms as well. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music are amongst them, and more where they came from. So do be sure to subscribe via these platforms. You can find the link in my social media bios or in the current episode you're listening to now, or most of the other ones for that matter. Anyways, with the plugs in the way, we'll take a listen to one of the trailers for the show, so stick around. I'll be back to proceed with my review and retrospective of the episodes that have been released thus far. This doesn't make sense. Where do we start? At the very beginning. I got in the elevator with these two weirdos. Then Tim got in the elevator. Approximately 12 minutes from now, I will be murdered. Tim Kono's death has been ruled a homicide. And apparently one of you jerk-offs did it. I can't stop thinking about this. Neither can I. We should do our own true crime podcast. We're going to go down there and look around for clues. Do you want to come? Do I want to break into a dead guy's apartment and go through all his shit? Sounds like an afternoon. Right now, the only thing that matters is that there's a killer on the loose in our building. (laughs) Oh, that is a very good line. Badly delivered, but a good line. I think we're onto something big here. And these are? Candid photos I took of our neighbors. Why are they all selfies? So I don't draw suspicion. It's so hot in here. Do we have to do this in a closet? The acoustics are better. And trust me, you need acoustics. I'm going to pass out. Get the who, the how, the why, and the why now. Get, get the, the what and the what? See, why would you say what? I never said what. There's no what. Shit just got super real. I think our list of suspects just got longer. Hold on! Get out of the building now! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Oh my god! Oh my god! Help me, someone! Keep your eyes peeled. Anything can be a clue. There's a very strong chance that the killer is musical superstar Sting. The guy from U2. Do you consent to being recorded? Just say anything to agree. No, please. Thanks, perfect. <laughs> so doing this. We're gonna cut. Um, I like the emotion. Keep that. I kind of need you to enunciate better. Do you have anything? The crying is covering the dialogue. Oh, that's a good, that's a good note. Okay, when you're ready and action. And we're back. Now I want to assure you all that, as the show is still in the progress of airing new episodes, there will be no spoilers conducted here during my review. Also, I'll be breaking down the series under different topics. General info regarding cast and crew, the episode plots themselves, and my overall thoughts thus far. Looking at the bad things, my favorite characters, and various aspects that will conclude with my rating for the first few episodes. 
And just as I mentioned moments ago, as the show is still in progress, if there are certain future stories that fall off in my general interest and opinion, it may potentially cause a break in my overall ratings that reflect my stance on the show. And of course, you have a right to your own opinions. Now let's take a look at the general info regarding Only Murders. The show is the brainchild of well-known comedian, actor, writer, musician, and all-around cool guy, points if you get the reference, Steve Martin and John Hoffman. The latter's name I'll admit I didn't know before, but upon research I see that he has written episodes for hit Netflix comedy Grace and Frankie with Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin. And he also directed a 2000s film titled Good Boy, a movie I fondly remember renting back in my younger days during Saturday Night Runs to Blockbuster with my pops. Joining Steve Martin in the main cast as frequent collaborator Martin Short, who previously worked together in films such as The Three Amigos, Father of the Brides 1 and 2, and several other specials and concert extravaganzas, and Selena Gomez. While prominently working as a musical artist, this isn't her first rodeo as a TV star, one of her most known roles on TV being Disney's Wizards of Waverly Place. Some special guests also appear in the mix as well, but more on that later. These three play strangers turned acquaintances who try to figure out a crime scene mystery while doing their own podcast. Now this show got me for those reasons there. Between the casting, the idea of mystery, and the fact that I can relate to being an up-and-coming podcaster myself, it was on my bucket list to watch. And boy, was it something else. Let's move on to the episodic plots, as spoiler-free as possible. Starting with episode 1, titled True Crime. This episode introduces our three main characters and how they came to know each other. Steve Martin plays Charles Hayden Savage a washed-up actor who once starred in a hit detective series from the 19-whatevers, as the character Brazos. And when I tell you he still believes he's in that show, he frequently relishes lines from the show to hide his mysterious personal background, and as a result, is known to be very unsuccessful with present-day auditions for new shows. Then in comes Martin Short as Oliver Putnam, an outrageously creative Broadway director resembling a more outgoing Keith Richards of sorts, who has been down in the dumps with financial issues due to a major musical flop. At first, I thought he was joking, but most musicals I think of that were flops commercially and with critics turned out to be cult favorites. Then finally, we have Selena Gomez playing a woman named Mabel, who is currently living in an unfinished section of the main housing section of the story, called the Arconia. All three of them are, as a matter of fact, which is how they meet, even though, as they once were strangers, the conversation was short and cryptic, which disappointed the poor outgoing Oliver. But a mystery podcast, followed by another chance meeting, groups them all together and leads to them starting their own podcast, ignited by a murder in their building committed by their neighbor named Tim Kono, which is a perfect segue for episode two, Who is Tim Kono? This episode is centered more around Mabel than the other male characters, which is a bit of a slow drag at certain points, but that's a minor flaw. In this story, Mabel's history with this Tim Kono victim is unveiled in a series of flashbacks. This episode is perfect for Mabel as you get more information about her. A woman reminiscing of horrible trauma and deep secrets. A sharp contrast from the first episode where she tagged along and usually piped in once in a while with, Oh, maybe she's off her of work right. Or maybe Tim Kono, I don't know if about sex. Or maybe if Tim Kono. Girlfriend, talk. <laughs> Forget it. And finally, episode three. How well do you know your neighbors? Is this episode title really trying to talk about my personal life? In this story, Charles and Mabel begin cracking down on neighborly suspects, including a former owner of a cat who also died the same time period the night Kono was murdered, while Oliver's increasing financial woes lead to him pleading for a podcast sponsorship from a former promoter, played by Nathan Lane. The humor picks up well in this episode and actually features some of my favorite humorous bits of the show. From Charles and Mabel's interrogation of the former cat owner, which badly ends with a fainting witness and, trigger word, frozen cat, to Oliver having a dream sequence in his head about suspects in the style of a Broadway audition, the traditional passing off on actors who are deemed not good enough, or great but not fit to be in that particular show. The episode ends with a surprise cameo from a well-known fella you may know when you watch, and that's all I'll say about that. So, for my general thoughts thus far, the story is building up to be quite a good mystery, with interesting character backgrounds and dynamics and some funny bits here and there to speed up the episode doing slow and down bits. It's hard to say which character I like the most though, as it'll probably change by the end when the mystery is hopefully solved. 
loved. But Martin Short as Oliver is killing it right now. But I also love Steve Martin's dry humor. And Selena Gomez's sarcastic and witty persona when dealing with these two old whippersnappers at times. So far, the show gets a great or yeehaw tastic rating from me. Good storylines, cast, and humor. Now to figure out whether this will change soon or not. It may or may not. Stay tuned for my next review of it when I do the next three episodes, which will probably be dropping in around two or three at the most weeks, is it? Anyways, that concludes my review on the first three episodes of Only Murders in the Building. Remember, it's only available on Hulu. I'm the Western Wonder and I hope you enjoyed my review slash episode. If you did, please be sure to let me know by leaving reviews on whichever platform I mentioned earlier, or tweet me on Twitter. Once again, that is at reviews underscore western. Stay tuned for more reviews coming soon as one of my favorite months to review a particular genre of movies is imminent in the next few weeks. But there will be reviews of old and new movies to come, on audio and on text. But that's a wrap for now. Stay safe and do be sure to stay tuned for my next episode. Western Wonder, Wrangling, and Signing 